הלו זיו, מה נשמע? אני רואה שאתה כבר בעבודה. אתה כבר מופיע כאן. כן. הלו בויז וגרס, וולקאם באק למי צ'אנל. ואתה יודע, אני חושב שיש לי ספיישל גסט פה. הוא נאום זיו ליבני מקיבוץ יחיעם, בנורת-וסט של גלילי, על הלבנית בורדה. And before I turn the camera around and I show you who this is, this very charming fellow, <laughs> uh, let me say that uh, I got to know him because he's a subscriber to my channel and we became friends and he invited me to Kibbutz Yechiam around about six or eight months ago. And Kibbutz Yechiam is the Kibbutz with its own <laughs> Crusader castle. And he arranged interviews for me with many people in Yechiam, and it was absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't seen the two episodes there, I think they're number 22 and number 23, please go back and have a look, and you'll see his wonderful, beautiful kibbutz. And here he is. This is Ziv Livni. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Good to see you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fantastic that you came here. I'll show you around here. Anyway, I'm going to go straight in with my first uh, question. What is it like to live under the threat of rocket fire? Because your kibbutz is only 10 kilometers in a straight yeah. line from the Lebanese border. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know, because we don't have any <laughs> rocket fire. <laughs> Nothing has landed. In Yechiam. Okay. Uh, it's always uh, aimed to the Naria. Yeah. And the kibbutz in uh, near Naria. Ako, you know, this, this kind of, so we are uh, relatively peaceful, uh, except for the artillery batteries that surround the kibbutz and we can hear them very well, you know, firing into Lebanon, it's, it's, it's very loud. I see. And uh, of course, um, we have uh, um, kibbutz people who are reservists, they are um, patrolling the kibbutz, they are guarding the gate 24-7. Uh, so we are pretty much um, safe. Okay, so but uh, what has happened is that since uh, Hamas attack on the 7th of October, about a week or so later, Hezbollah started uh, firing from Lebanon. So since then you had alarms and sirens going off. Yeah. So what happens when the siren goes off? What do you do in the kibbutz? Uh, it happened only once. Ah. The siren went off once. Yeah. About four months ago. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, early in the, uh, the war. Uh, I thought that some um, um, aircraft uh, has uh, infiltrated uh, into Israel. They said that they're... that it landed in the motion next to us uh, and of course everybody were panicked it was still fresh october what, 7. what was this an ultralight or a... yeah they said that it was like a, something like ultralight yeah and um, so everybody were extremely nervous and uh, the siren went, went off and uh, we went, we spent about an hour in the bomb shelters and then they told us that it's a false alarm So, <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so, but you are in the region, or are you slightly out of the district where, in fact, there was a forced evacuation of residents from yes. the border? So was Kibbutz Yechiam part of that enforced evacuation? No, no, no. Uh, Kibbutz Hanita, where they are not far from us, Rosh Anikra, mm. Kibbutz Rosh Anikra. Matsuba, I think, and a few others, and Moshavim, and uh, more up, the upper Galilee, mm -hmm. over there, also Kibbutzim were had to evacuate. Not us. We are not under a direct threat. I see. And we are, not, we are not too close to the border, so we didn't have to evacuate, fortunately. But you... Uh are part of the border zone as i said you are 10 kilometers in a straight line yeah from nine and a half so. okay so that's about i don't know about six miles or so something yeah. like that and at the moment 
there are about, I don't know what the division is between the south and the north, but there are somewhere in the region of about 140,000 people, Israelis, mm. who are still evacuated from their yeah. homes. And how do you see the situation uh, developing uh, now with regards to the northern border? Um can't really say, but uh, it's pretty uh, static at the moment, you know, uh, nothing is really happening. Uh, if, uh, if Israel will reach some kind of uh, an agreement with Hezbollah, that they will redraw further back, you know, to the Litani River. Yes, which is about, I don't know, 30, 40 about, kilometers away. No, it's less. Less, but 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers. Yeah then uh, there's a chance that uh, the people will get back to the to the to the place it's not only kibbutzim it's also small towns like shlomi kiryat shmona you know uh, this sort of uh, because th this is the uh, big uh, debate now whether hassan nasrallah in charge of hezbollah will do let's uh, call it a sensible thing or whether he's going to escalate. How do you see the firing going on now, even if it doesn't affect Yechiam directly? I mean, is he just testing the ground, or is he trying to draw us in, or is he uh, just backing up Hamas, or does he really want a proper fight on his hands? You can never tell. <laughs> That's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> with these people, you know, uh, we we are ready for any any I don't know scenario. Mm. Um, we are well aware that a, a war can break in, in in you know in just a split second mm -hmm. if if they decide to. At the moment, it's a pretty you know uh, pretty low uh, profile, but. We are, we, you, know, you never know, you know. Yeah. You see, but, but this situation has been going on for too long. I mean, the present situation, but back into history, it's been going on for a long time. I mean, uh, no, I mean, it, this is a, it never happened in the history of, of Israel that, that Kibbutzim had to evacuate mm -hmm. you know, on the, the northern border, on the northern border, and, and live in hotels, not only Kibbutzim, as I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. towns and Moshavim, and live in hotels for three or four months. You know, it's, it's uh, unprecedented. Yeah, um, I mean, my personal history with regards to Lebanon goes back uh, basically to 1982. Yeah. When there was the first Lebanese war, which we called Peace for Galilee. Milchem et Shelig, Shlomo yeah. Galil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, there was, a, let's call it a reason why the war broke out, and then it was extended... And then we went into Lebanon and we went north past the Litani River up to the uh, Beirut Bahamdun Road. Yeah. Uh, and we actually stayed in Lebanon trying unsuccessfully to uh, make a regime change under the Maronite government of. Um, Pier Jamal and Bashar Jamal. Yeah. And we didn't succeed. And we were in Lebanon, I think, for maybe 15 years. 18 years. 18 years. And then we were through. So, in fact, the Fatah were ousted from Lebanon and uh, different groups moved in. And we didn't succeed in a regime change. Do you think that if the situation escalates now, do you think something serious can be done about moving Hezbollah back maybe 20 kilometers from the Israeli border? Uh, it's certainly possible. Um... And we'll have to come to terms with them. Uh, it's not easy, as you know. But uh, at the moment, I don't see any change. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see any change, you know, for at least, you know, the next few weeks. Okay, so let me ask you then, what are the preconditions that are needed for the people who've been evacuated from the northern border? What are the conditions for them to return to their homes? You have to keep in mind that um, some of these kibbutzim are, are, are a mess. They've been hit by, by direct fire from Lebanon, uh, shelling, mm -hmm. and uh, the army moved into these kibbutzim. Mm -hmm. uh, tanks are in there, they're making a lot of damage um, and uh, people actually don't, many people don't have anywhere to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, some kibbutzim in our area, for example, are half, half of the kibbutz is, um, is destroyed. So, um, you know, there are, there are lots of question marks. We, okay. we, we have no... Um, Perception of um, when and, and what it's 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 a bit complicated. As it's a, very complicated, as we all know. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Now, apart from that, I mean, by the evacuation of these people, also all of the agriculture has been hit, and not only hit directly. I mean, here we have a situation where you in the Yichiam can be affected by the parabellum arc of a rocket, whereas those yeah. kibbutzim are in direct firing line from anti-tank missiles from one kilometer or maybe two kilometers yes. away. And uh, kibbutzim like uh, Miskav Am and Manara. Manara, they've been hit, the houses... And down in the Moshav, Moshav, Valley, have, Moshav, been hit, Moshav Magaliot. have been hit directly, and houses have been yeah, uh, damaged Betula. and destroyed. So it's a very complex uh, situation. Okay. We, I don't have any answers for uh, for now. <laughs> I'll call you if, uh, if anything <laughs> will change. <laughs> No, it, it, it's both the humanitarian crisis for the Israelis on the border who have moved out. It's a, an economic crisis as well. For sure. And, uh, you know, we just have to say to Nostrala, you know, stop firing and then let's see what happens. We can say what we want, but... Uh, he doesn't listen. He is doing what he likes. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, this is the position and... We, we do hope that everybody will return to their homes as soon as possible. Okay, so we'll end here on that high note. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me remind the viewers, go back to episodes 22 and 23, where I talk to uh, people in the Kibbutz Yechiam, again, the only Kibbutz with a Crusader castle, and uh, Ziv here, he was very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> he invited me to Yechiam and he arranged a series of interviews with some very, very interesting people. So once again, thank you, uh, Ziv, for that, those episodes. Happy and thank you. you for this uh, brief uh, conversation. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye-bye. נבנמנים קטנים, כאילו עם מיקרוסקופ אתה תראה את הגודל שלהם. ובמשך שלושה שבועות היה עלייה לרגל, להיא תנועה